Hey, I'm Logan. I'm the producer here at Icolite, and recently I got the opportunity to take the new Sony a7R5 diving for a whole week through the Exuma Islands. I've got the camera and the Icolite housing here, and in this video, I'm going to show you how I set it up for underwater shooting, like my choice of dome port, trim weight system, and some extremely helpful customizations. If you take nothing else out of this video, the custom button shortcuts will save you so much time, and they're relevant for other Sony Alpha cameras too. So take note, even if you're shooting on something else. I'm gonna go more in depth into my settings and opinion on the camera in the next video. But for right now, I'm gonna keep this video focused on tips for setting it up. We make one housing that works with both the A7R Mark V and the A7 Mark IV cameras. Physically, both cameras are similar, but the small differences require separate base mounts. So just make sure you're using the right one for your camera. There's also a small difference in the mode dial between the two cameras. The A7R5 has a button on the mode dial that needs to be pressed to turn the dial. So you'll have to put in a small screw inside the housing control. It's really easy to install and you can just keep it installed even if you're using the A7 IV. Both the base plate and the screw come standard with the housing after January 1st, 2023, and the upgrade kit is available on our website if you already own the housing. For your lenses, you'll need to add a compatible DL system lens port to the front. Your choice of port will depend on what lens you're shooting with, so check out our lens port chart on our website to find the right combination. As always, if you're having trouble figuring out what you need, give us a call, shoot us an email, DM us on social media, or just ask in the comments below. Some wide angle and zoom lenses are supported by your choice of two dome ports, the compact dome and the full 8 inch dome. I shot both of these, each for different reasons, and they have their pros and cons. The compact dome is great for speed and general ease of shooting. It's less buoyant so it's easy to get underwater. It has a small enough profile that it's easy to travel with and doesn't cause any noticeable drag while diving. The compact dome is actually a smaller section of our 8 inch dome, so you'll get very similar edge sharpness. The full size 8 inch dome is a bit bigger, but it's almost essential for getting those great over under shots. Because there's more volume in the larger dome, it makes the system more buoyant, which can make it tough to keep it level while diving. The solution for this comes in the form of a trim weight. What's cool about Icolite's trim weight system is that it just uses a standard dive weight that you'll find at any dive site, so you don't need to travel with any weights. This aluminum rail attaches to the bottom of the housing and can be adjusted forward or backwards depending on your dome length. I had a Sigma 24-70 on my camera, which is a pretty big lens and found that about two pounds weighed everything else out nicely. One phrase you'll hear us say all the time is know your camera and not just know how to change your settings, know your camera so that it works for you. If you don't like where a dial is, know how to change that setting to a different dial or button. There were a handful of quick changes that I made to make shooting underwater a lot easier and faster. The first change I made was to separate my photo and video settings. This way I could easily switch between photo and video without changing settings all the time. To do this, go to the last menu that looks like a toolbox. Scroll to the third page and choose different set for still and movie. And I checked all of the boxes. Personally, doing this is the difference between taking photos and videos instead of just one. Changing the settings each time is a waste of time. Next, scroll down to record with shutter. This will make it so that your shutter button starts and stops recording. This way, I don't have to reach on top of the housing to the red button and I can use the shutter trigger that's already by my finger. It's a simple change, but it will save you time. Now let's set up some more custom buttons. Press the menu button, go to the last menu, scroll to the third page, but this time choose custom key dial set for either photo or video. In my case, these settings will be for video. I've reset my camera to default settings, so if yours is brand new out of the box, it should look the same and I'm just gonna go down my list and show you what I changed. After this video, you can check out my full list of settings in the related article on our website, and that'll be linked in the description below. First, I set my AEL button to tracking on toggle. Go to the AFMF menu, focus area page, and choose tracking on toggle. This allowed me to toggle the new AI tracking autofocus without the touch screen, which I don't have access to underwater. I just press it to start tracking and press it again to end tracking. There's also an option called tracking on, but if you choose this, you have to keep the button pressed to track. Either options work, I just found it easier to keep a stable shot if both my hands were on the handle instead of pressing the button. The second change I made was turning on back button focus. I think this is set by default, but if it's not, you can find this option in the AF MF menu, first page, and choose AF on. Next, I chose to make my custom button one toggle the gamma display assist. 
This is found in the last menu, fifth page, and choose Gamma Display Assist Select. I was shooting a lot of log on this trip, and it really helped me gauge my exposure by bringing back some contrast to my live view. If you're not shooting log, another good shortcut that go here is changing your focus area. That's in the AFMF menu, second page, and choose either focus area, which will bring up a sidebar menu, or switch focus area, which will toggle through the different options each time you press the button. The fourth change, and probably the most important, is creating a shortcut to custom white balance. If you haven't checked out our video on the importance of custom white balance, it'll be linked on the screen now. Go to the exposure menu, fourth page, and choose white balance. On my camera, I made it custom button three so that I could easily reach it with my left thumb. This made it so much faster to sample the sand, my hand, or my buddy's scuba tank to get the right white balance. Finally, I switched the rear and the front dials. Out of the box, the rear dial controls your shutter and the front dial controls your aperture. While shooting video, my shutter is staying pretty consistent and only changes when I change the frame rate. And I usually use my aperture to adjust my exposure. So I found it easier and more stable to use the rear dial as my aperture and the front dial as my shutter. To do this, go down to the dial icon on the custom keys menu. First option will be to change your front dial. To set it to shutter speed, go to the exposure menu, first page, and select shutter speed. Then the second option will be your rear dial. Go to the same exposure menu, first page, and select aperture. All right, that's my setup for shooting on the Sony a7R5 underwater. Of course, there are hundreds of ways to set up your camera, so if you don't like mine, switch some things around to make it work for your shooting style. I hope this makes your next dive a little easier. If you want to see some more of my footage and hear my thoughts on the camera itself, stay tuned for the next video. Thanks for watching, and happy diving.